All right, welcome. In this series of videos, I'm going to go over section 5.1. Make this uh, larger. 5.1 is looking at a hypothesis test and uh, introducing normal distributions. We've already seen symmetric bell-shaped curves, so we'll do a little more analysis in these normal distributions. 5.1 is all about hypothesis tests, and then we'll talk about 5.2. And that's using uh, normal distributions for confidence intervals. All right, let's start with this question. Um, There's an interesting study done a couple years ago about do malaria parasites impact mosquito behavior? There's actually been a, a pretty big boom in the last 10 years about looking at parasites specifically and how they affect behavior of their hosts. So this was, study was done in uh, 2013. And there's a link here to the study. But mosquitoes were randomized to either eat from a malaria-infected mouse, so an exposed group, or a healthy mouse. So two groups of mosquitoes. One group of mosquitoes got the malaria virus or parasite, and the other group did not. And after infection, the parasites go through two stages. So in the first eight days, if you uh, say a mosquito is infected by malaria from the exposed group, the first eight days, if it's a, you know bites a human, they will not get malaria. It's not infectious. But um, nine days to 28 for the next couple of weeks, if a mosquito bites a person who's uh, who's bitten a uh, malaria-infested mouse, then the person or mammal will uh, contract malaria. So the the study was to check to see if um, whether the mosquito approached a human in a cage with them. So the humans were put in cages with mosquitoes. And at both these two intervals, not yet infectious stage and the infectious stage, and want to know does behavior differ, um, you know, by the exposed mosquitoes versus a control. So that's going to be one uh, study, and then looking at does it differ by the infectious stage, so day one through eight or day nine through twenty-eight. So the idea of this is ma uh, malaria, the malaria itself, the Parasite would benefit if mosquitoes approach humans less right after being exposed to malaria. So imagine mos mosquito bites the uh, mouse, contracts malaria. But if you are thinking about this in terms of the parasite, you would not want the mosquito to you know attack or bite a human because you know humans could uh, kill them. Humans are risky for the mosquitoes, and malaria will not be exposed or infected to the human. And then we want to know, scientists want to know, will these mosquitoes approach humans more after becoming infectious to pass on the infection? In other words, does this malaria somehow change the, you know, brain structure and the incentive structure of mosquitoes to approach humans less right after being uh, exposed to malaria, but then more once they could pass on the disease? And does affecting mosquitoes of malaria actually impact their behavior this way? So first look at mosquitoes before they become infectious. This is the first days. So we have two groups here. The proportion of the control. These are mosquitoes that do not have malaria that approach humans. And P sub E is a proportion of exposed um, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes that have malaria to approach humans. But again, keep in mind the first eight days, the mosquitoes cannot um, infect humans with the malaria virus. All right, so what are the relevant hypotheses? If you want to guess, uh, click pause. Because I'm going to keep going. I'm going to notice right now it can't be C or D. It doesn't make sense for hypothesis. It has to be equality. So we're looking at which of these proportions should be different. And right here, if you think about this, the alternative says that the exposed mosquitoes will approach humans at a lower proportion than the controlled mosquitoes. So this would be, you know, the malaria somehow changing the behavior of the mosquito to not approach humans because the virus will not be spread. And this is the data. So P hat exposed minus P hat control. Out of 113 mosquitoes that were exposed to malaria but couldn't spread the disease, 20 of them approached humans. Out of 117 mosquitoes from the control group that did not have malaria, 36 approached humans. So if we look at, here's a couple bar charts, approached versus not approached. 17.8% of the exposed group um, 
approached humans, whereas 30.8% of the control group, and that's a difference of you know, about 13%. So 13% change between the two groups. And the question is, is this big enough? So it's a negative right here, but I think of it as a more the control group uh, approached humans in this case. So if we did a one-two randomization test, entered in the data, of course, enter the data, get at least a thousand samples, enter in your statistic down here, the minus 0 0.131, and it's a left tail, left tail because we're doing a less than as an alternative hypothesis, and we get a p-value about 0 0.009. So notice if we kept going, we would reject the null hypothesis. This p-value is very small. So there's a fairly strong evidence that the control group approached humans at a much higher rate. Observe statistic, and then there's the p-value. But if we go back, so I've notice, I've been mentioning this all semester, but what type of shape, shape does this distribution make? We've been calling this a symmetric and bell-shaped. We have a symmetric and bell-shaped curve. And we've been seeing this, hopefully you've been noticing all semester, all these different uh, values, you know, mean, mean, looking at proportions. Um, keep kind of getting the same shape, bell-shaped distributions, also symmetric. I'll have this similar shape. Again, not exactly, because we're doing randomization distributions here, but very similar. We have this normal curve or bell-shaped symmetric curve and this is called the normal distribution. So that symmetric bell-shaped curve we've seen um, basically the entire class is called a normal distribution. This normal distribution I'm going to call this a theoretical model because this is uh, you know pure mathematics it's not using randomization and we have you know, the bell-shaped curve, the ghost-shaped curve for random samples with sufficiently large sample size, the distribution of many common sample statistics can be approximated with a normal distribution. This is very powerful. We're going to spend more time in the future focusing on the central limit theorem when we get to chapter six. And it basically says the larger the sample size you get, the more normal the distribution of the statistic will be. And when we get back get to chapter six, we'll talk about this sufficiently large, what that actually means in the future. But right now, this is very powerful because not every uh, distribution is normal. There's, we've seen lots of right skew and left skew distributions. But if we take the distribution of all of the statistics, all of the samples, we get a normal distribution. And the normal distribution is fully described by two Riccoli's parameters mean and standard deviation. That's the only thing you need to know about the normal curve, the mean, and standard deviation. So notice right here, if we do n parentheses 0 comma 1, this is saying this normal bell-shaped curve right here has a mean of 0, standard deviation of 1, and this other distribution has a mean of 2. Notice the center of this bell-shaped curve is 2, and roughly has the same uh, size because it has the same standard deviation and I might be able to make this a little better to look at kind of looking at I've got the normal distribution here graphed and notice right here the mean is zero if I take this mean and move it it just moves the shape it moves the bell-shaped curve in different spots on the x-axis the mean could be negative could be positive could be almost anything A zero means it's centered at zero. If I say mean of 1.1, that means the center of this mean would be at 1.1. And let's see how the standard deviation changed. Standard deviation, again, this measures the spread. So if the standard deviation gets smaller, notice what happens is it gets closer and closer to zero. Standard deviation of 0.45, more of the data is close to the center. There's less of a spread. And this keeps getting arbitrarily large. On the other side, if we make the standard deviation bigger, then the curve flattens out. Then it's hard to even see that it's a bell-shaped curve. And just to note like what the standard deviation function looks like, 
it's this right here. If I make the mean one, the standard deviation, say I make that two. And here the standard deviation formula looks like there's a one over square root of two pi, there's an e raised to minus x squared. I'm going to show the formula in class, but you actually don't really need to worry about this because stat key, we're going to use stat key to actually compute areas and probabilities with the normal distribution. All right. So just as a quick review, if a randomization distribution is normally distributed, normally distributed, how can we write that? N stands for normal distribution, null value, standard error, statistic, standard error, parameter, standard error. Oh, and I click my button. It is a normal distribution, or sorry, the, the null value, because in hypothesis tests, we assume the null is true, so that should be the center. And then we have that standard error, which is the just the standard deviation of the statistic. So if we look at this example with the malaria mosquitoes, which normal distribution should be used to approximate this? This right here, the null is zero. That's the center of the bell-shaped curve. So it's gotta be A or B. And the second spot right here is the standard error or standard deviation. So it'd be 0 0.056. And that would give the best approximation, zero and 0 0.056 would give the normal curve, the null being zero. And we can compare the original statistic to this normal distribution to find p-value. So this is really just a different way of finding a probability. So here if I were to enter this, and I'm going to show how that could be done directly. You go to stat key. Theoretical distributions, chapter five, we're looking at normal. So click on normal distribution. Right here, I've got a mean of zero, standard deviation one. That's gonna be the standard setup. Edit parameters. For the problem that we're looking at, the mean is zero, but that standard deviation is 0 0.056. Click okay. And we're doing a left tail test. Down here we got a minus 0.131, that was from the slide earlier, to get 0 0.0097. And a picture of this is shown right here. Mean of zero, standard deviation 0 0.056. This is the statistic that we got, the difference in the proportions, and we have p-value. So if you remember from before, the p-value is 0 0.009, not 0 0097 won't be the exact same as the randomization distributions, but it should be fairly close. And it's basically the same exa exact idea of the p-value approach we've been taking in chapter four, but it's a smooth curve instead of, you know, kind of a jaggy uh, normal distribution. So often we standardize statistics to have a mean zero and standard deviation one. And we do that with these z-scores we've been talking about. So the way to do that is to compute your z-score. X is your value minus the mean over the standard deviation. But if you're dealing with a null hypothesis, we're going to change this slightly. Think about that X is your statistic, your p-hat or p-hat minus p-hat. Your mean is your null value. Standard deviation, we call that standard error. So this is just another way to approach this problem. So Z is your statistic minus the null over the standard error. And this lets us set the, uh, basically how extreme is your statistic on a common scale. So this normalizes or standardizes your tests. So if we take the malaria of the last example, statistic is minus 0.131. In the null hypothesis, the null value is zero. From random distribution, we get standard error of 0.056. So if we throw this in the formula, statistic is minus 0.131 minus 0 over 0 0.056 to get a minus 2.34. And now when we use the standardization, we compare it to n of mean of 0, standard deviation 1. And 
went to stat key, uh, we would get 